Good morning, good morning. Uh, this is Shadron United Methodist Church. Today is a wonderful day that our God has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Uh, you know, the weather has been really bad. And uh, uh, so we, we just thought of having service uh, online. And I'd like you as you we begin for you to share, share with your friends, share with our church members who are not able to no, I've seen a few people have come into church today uh, thinking there was service. Sorry, we couldn't get across to you. So please do uh, just share with your friends. Uh, we're going to have a great service today. Just be in that atmosphere of, of worship as we continue our time. So I'm going to be sharing some music and some things with you. And I have a few of our brethren in church where I'm getting them from their homes. And so... Uh, the readers, I'm getting them from their homes. Uh, so we're going to be online. So please go online. And so we're going to be on ho at home. Uh, I've opened the church so that people can come in for those who are able to come. And so please, uh, we're going to have a great time. But share with your friends. If you have prayer requests, put them on the comments. And we're going to be seeing the comments. And I will be able to eventually... Uh, you know, put it and we'll pray about it. Uh, if you're watching, let me know by you sending on the comments, greet, type your name for me to know. And how many people are watching with us today at Shadron United Methodist Church? Uh, it, it, it was really very interesting to see that uh, I couldn't, uh, I went to pick my wife up from Denver and we were in Denver for five days. And I know some people also, uh, Jack Isaac, uh, and then the Stephanie, our music directors, were also stuck there. I don't know if Jack is back, but uh, I know that Stephanie is back and she's going to be doing some things. So yes, I see. Good morning. Uh, Vicky, I can see you saying good morning. Please, yes, uh, Melody. Welcome, Melody Harbert. Thank you so much. Uh, please keep sharing with your friends. We want to get all this place with a lot of people. Uh, Kimberly Smith. Uh, well, yes, the Smiths are here. Thank you. Uh just keep the greetings on. We want to be very engaging. Clark, Clark Gardner, good morning. Thank you so much. Shalene Savage, thank you. Oh, great, great, great. So we have our church people here. Just keep the comments going. Keep greetings and send your prayer requests. People you want us to pray for, put everything on there. And we are grateful. I'm going to be, some of the comments, I'm going to be putting them online. Linda says, good morning. And Vicky Malfa says, yes, Meryl and Vicky are watching. Melody is there uh, saying good morning. Kimberly says the Smiths are here. I hope you guys are staying warm. Thank you so much, Clark Gardner. Thank you. And Shalene Savage, I'm sure you're there with your, yes, Jim Grimes. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, good to see you online. This is the opportunity we have that God has given us with technology to be able to. And so please, I've seen some of you liking the place. Keep engaging, keep engaging us. It's going to be a great time. Uh, it's going to be a great moment worshiping our God. Uh, I want to uh, read a couple of announcements for us uh, so that we can just keep that in mind. Uh, the point setters are still, uh, forms are still available. We have a few more so that we can put it for our candlelight and Christmas Eve service, which is going to hold on Saturday at 5 p.m. We hope uh, with the weather, we think that everything is still going to be fine. Maybe cold, but coming to the church, we're going to have one service, and we will beam it live. But we want to enjoy that candlelight and all those great times that we always enjoy. Uh, please keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. Make sure you share with your friends that they engage with us today, especially for those of us in Shadron area. It's been cold. Uh, the the last year group, I don't know what's going to happen, but the announcement says the last year group of 2022 will be Wednesday, December 21st. So youth group will resume uh, January 11th. Confirmation classes are held on Sunday. Suddenly we will not have one today because of the weather. So let's see what happens. We may have to, you know, suspend for a while. And then, of course, the young adults, they will, the young adult and the college group will we'll begin their fellowship, uh, January the 8th, uh, 5 p.m. at Just Love Coffee. The Board of Trustees are still going to be meeting tomorrow, Monday, unless they, there's an information from the chair. There will be no United Methodist men's meeting all through December. They have other things and other ways they're going to be connecting. 
let's keep sharing and let's me keep getting the comments. If you have a prayer request, we have a few prayer requests, but if you do have prayer requests or concerns or things that you're grateful for, please type them in the comment and I'll be showing it for everyone to be able to see. So please just uh, uh, get that ready as we get ourselves set. We'll do the opening prayers uh, for those who have the bulletin. The bulletin actually is online and I'm going to begin with it. And then I'm going to be calling uh, our dear sister to do the lightning of the Advent candle. Uh, Stephanie is going to be doing that from home. And so we are going to be improvising, but we're going to enjoy that great time. So let us begin by, with our opening prayer. Almighty God, light of the world, you caused light to shine out of darkness. In the advent of Jesus Christ, our Lord, you constantly open us the way we are to prepare. We confess our unwillingness to see the light and to walk in your ways. We have not always opened our eyes to the needs of others, and our feet have wandered from the paths of justice and peace. We ask that the Spirit of Christ be born anew within us, that our hearts be steered, to glorify the nativity with acts of compassion and service. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to be bringing in our dear sister who is going to be doing the, the lighting of the Advent candles uh, for the fourth Advent, uh, which is a candle of uh, love. Yes. Stephanie, are you good? Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. What do we have? Isaiah said that the Lord spoke to the king and said, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know even when we aren't sure ourselves, God wants us to experience his presence. Even when we think we can handle life on our own, God sends us signs of God's presence with us. All we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. We light these candles, the candle of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, of deep everlasting joy, and today of presence that speaks of love as a sign that no matter our circumstance, we know we are not alone. Thank you so much, Stephanie for the lightning of the candle, the third, the fourth candle, the candle of love. Uh, let me continue. Uh, good morning, uh, Susan Hockey. Thank you so much. What a great time we have in God's presence. Then we will be doing the readings. Uh, Sharon, uh, good morning, Sharon. Sharon Davis, good morning. I'd like you to keep uh, typing in if you have prayer requests, if you have something you're grateful for and thankful for, just put it on there. Yes, Pam and John, Isa, sunny, snowy Sunday. Hello to each of you, she, they say. So hello to everyone that is watching today. And don't forget to keep sharing so that we can get a lot of our people together worshiping God. I'm going to call for the reading of God's Word. The first reading will come from our dear sister, Linda. Uh, we're bringing Linda. Linda is reading. From home, Isaiah 7, 10 to 16. Linda. Good morning. Good morning. The reading is Isaiah 7, chapters 10 through 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. 
Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz says, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. Thank you so much, Linda. And uh, for the reading of God's word, we will then uh, go to the New Testament reading. Uh, it's going to be done by Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'll be reading from Matthew, verse 18, chapters eight, blah, 18 through 25. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to, seven, up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. These are the words for the Lord to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Teresa, for the reading of God's word. Uh, I'd like to welcome those who are joining us again. Uh, Susan, Susan is saying good morning. Sharon is saying, Sharon Davis says good morning. Uh, John and Pam Isa says, sunny, snowy Sunday. Hello to each of you. And then Margaret says, good morning. Hi, Margaret. Uh, it's a great time to, to enjoy the, the presence of God in the midst of the snow. And those who are still snowed in, uh, it's going to be a great time this week. Hopefully we'll get things settled. Before we, I'm going to be asking Stephanie to read some of the prayer requests that we have. If you do have a prayer request, please Post it on. You have someone, something you want to be thankful for or someone you want us to be praying for. I would like you to, to do that so that we can get that on the way. But while we're doing that, I'd like you to watch this about the fragility of the world that we, we are in today. Life is fragile. It's a fact we're learning in real time, every day. What we once called normal has seemingly disappeared. There's uncertainty in the air, restlessness in our hearts. Things we once took for granted are becoming difficult to find. Our usual day-to-day -day has evolved into this odd chaos. Peace is becoming obsolete. Many have lost jobs, security, and those they love. The pain is undeniable. But what if our fragility caused us to lean harder into God? What if in our weakness, we chose to rely more on His strength? Would our outlook change? Would the peace that passes understanding begin to drown out the noise of this moment? Would we walk in a quiet confidence, knowing our God is mighty to save? We're not promised tomorrow. But we are given a simple truth to stand on. Our God goes before us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Yes, life is fragile. But in our weakness, He is strong.
Amen. Praise be to God. Uh, the world is fragile. Things are fragile, but we've got a God that can stabilize us. And so I'm going to be bringing in our dear sister Stephanie again to read uh, some of the prayer concerns that we have for the week. And if you are able to add your own, add it to the comment section so that we can get it uh, together. Uh, over to you, Stephanie, again. Thank you, Pastor Tunde. On our prayer list at this time, we are still lifting up to the Lord ongoing health concerns that Randy Lawson, Heidi West, and Jim Stokey are facing. We're also continuing to pray for Pat Colgate, as well as for Sharon Rickenbach's nephew, Brent, who is dealing with liver cancer. We also want to continue to remember the family of Jim Willie, who recently passed away, and for Jeremy Smith's dad, who is home now and going through the healing process in addition, we want to continue to lift up our sister, Judy Hawthorne, as she works through some health issues as well. Daniel Bowen is also on our prayer list as he faces some health problems and is seeking solutions with the help of medical professionals. Kochwars also have a nephew, Darren, who was diagnosed with multiple myeloma and he is undergoing treatments. Their son-in-law, Stephen Carter, is having heart bypass surgery, and I'm not sure if that already happened. It looks like it was supposed to happen on the 16th. So we hope that if it happened, it went well, and we're praying for a wonderful and marvelous recovery for Stephen. Kochwars also have another nephew, Matthew, in Missouri, who has some serious health complications after having sepsis. Jung Colin's mother, who had septic illness, is improving, and we continue to pray for her, as well as for Jung's husband, Yang, who is now in Pennsylvania visiting family and friends. Of course, we want to thank everybody who keeps our church going and running and meets all of our needs, no matter what it is, with a smile and with joy, as we heard last week. Kochwars have a friend who has some bleeding on the brain and is deciding on treatment along with medical specialists. It goes without saying, but we still want to verbalize it, that we pray for everyone affected by the snow and cold that we've had this week and that it sounds like it's forecasted for next week. We pray that everybody stays safe. As we are in the holiday season, we pray for peace for us and for the whole world. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm going to be adding, um, uh, we have a police officer, uh, it was Linda that told us about that uh, in our town, they, had a, they lost their baby, still bad, and the uh, police officer, the baby's name is Jeremiah Young, and you know we, they were not prepared for that, and so we need to pray that God will comfort them at a time like this and give them the strength to go through this season of really uh, intense uh, fear and grief, uh, losing someone that is very important. They are, that's the first child. And so we need to keep them in our prayers. Also, Daniel Bowen had given me an update yesterday through a text message. Uh, Mayo Clinic in Minnesota decided to see whether they want to have him. And that's the best, you know, one of the best facilities in the world to treat uh, this kind of ailment and they are still deciding. They have all people from all over the world. So we need to pray that uh, he gets accepted while they make that decision, but also that healing will be his own. Uh, I don't know if there are other prayer requests, but I will pray about this once and uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you and we thank you so much for giving us a great cold, snow, snowy and sunny Sunday like Palm and John Heiser have talked about it. We're grateful that we are here. We're grateful for the strength. We're grateful for our people who have been helping to plow the roads, our you know, facility people, electricity people. We've been having power all, the, all through this time, and we're grateful to you that we have the opportunity to be in our home. Uh, it reminds us of those who may not have that opportunity to even have a home. Uh, so we don't take this for granted. We're grateful. Uh, we thank you and we continue to pray for all the requests that we have here concerning Heidi and Randy and Jim and Pat 
and Sharon's nephew Brent and Jim Willis family, Jeremy Smith's dad, Judy Arthur, Daniel Bowen, and the nephews of uh, the Kachua's Darren, with all the sicknesses and the challenge of multiple myeloma. And uh, we want to thank you for their son-in-law, Stephen Carter, who had had a bypass, and we pray that he will recover uh, quickly and everything will be well. And uh, we continue to pray for the nephew, uh, Matthew in Missouri, who had serious complication and is having sepsis. We also keep praying for uh, June Collins' mom, uh, with septic illness also, we, we know that he's, she's getting better, but also we pray that you will continue to bring healing for everyone in our church family, uh, for a friend who has been bleeding in the, on the brain of uh, one of our members. Uh, they are seeing specialists uh, for those who are feeling uh, the, the loss of someone in a time like this. Please may you bring peace to them. We continue to pray for the family of the police officer in our town. Uh, who has lost a baby, Jeremiah Young. Uh, it's a painful time. It's a time of grief. And we ask that you will comfort and support them in a time like this, that they will feel your presence by their sides. They will feel you, oh God. We continue to pray for Daniel, that you will help uh, Mayo Clinic to make that decision and be able to help him as he struggles this time of grief and this time of pain and this time of uncertainty, Lord. We ask you, O oh God, that you will bring blessings, you will bring peace. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you because of all that you've done and what you will continue to do in this season. Lord Jesus, we give you praise and we thank you for hearing our prayers. We ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be, done. be done, on earth, on earth as it is, as it in, is heaven. in heaven. Give, Give us this day, this day our, our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive and us our trespasses, our trespasses. As, as we, as we forgive, forgive those, those who trespass, trespass against, us. against us. And lead us and not, into, not temptation, into temptation, but deliver us from, us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power. And the power. And the, glory and the glory forever. forever. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. We really appreciate our uh, brethren. Thank you so much. Uh, we keep on going. Uh, I want to see if I can play you one more thing uh, just to encourage and give us grace. Yes, you can keep the comments going. I can see uh, Stephanie's comment, uh, being grateful and thankful for tr safe travels home from Denver yesterday. Yes, 
it was uh, not an easy one, but God uh, has been gracious and we thank God for that. And, you know, we thank and we commit all those who are still traveling onto God's hand to be able to come in. While we'll, now it's time to kind of listen to God's word. Just take a, list, a little of this before we continue. If only I could go back and change some things, set things straight. I wish I had a do-over. I've made choices. I've lost out. I've wished a thousand times I could go back and try again. It's hard not to imagine what might have been. If I had just stopped to think. If I had just done as I was told. If I hadn't thought I knew it all. Why didn't I just take a few deep breaths? It took one second to listen. Maybe my life would be better. Maybe there wouldn't be such a high price to pay. Things would be different now. I wouldn't have so many regrets. But is everything lost? Can I just get a do-over? Is there a way back to new beginnings? Because regret can mean a new beginning. When it's given to the one who produces a repentance. A repentance that delivers me from my grief. The one who takes my mistakes. And somehow redeems me through them. Who tells me I'm not the sum total of all my regrets? He tells me not to look back. Because there's nothing there to see. I am not my mistakes. He is faithful and just to forgive me. I just have to ask him. And then I can look straight forward. Forget what is behind me. And strain towards what is ahead. And walk away with all regrets erased by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Every day I'm given a clean slate. A clean slate. I get a clean slate. Do you know that at sometimes, uh, you know, the season like this, as people prepare for Christmas and celebrate Christmas, could also be a time that some people have a lot of regrets. And that's why I play that video. There's always the opportunity for a new beginning, opportunity for a clean slate. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, for talking about the safe travels. Jim Stocky is talking about good morning and thank you for the prayers. We continue to pray for our church family. And so we're grateful. So back to, to that thought. Whereas it's supposed to be a time of gratitude, a time to be grateful to God for the things that God has done, there is a tendency for the devil and our minds to use that against us, to think about all the bad things that have happened, all the mistakes we've made all through the year. And rather than being grateful, we begin to condemn ourselves and the year ends with guilt, a lot of guilt. So I want to encourage you as we round off this year, 2022, to ask yourself, are there mistakes that I've made? Are there things that are wrong that I did? We go to God for forgiveness. And after that, begin afresh. We're given the opportunity of a new slate to begin afresh. And so don't sit down there and weeping and crying and being discouraged over the past, but look forward to what God can do in the future. The fourth Sunday of Advent reminds us is the candle that was lit today is a candle of love. And we are reminded during the third, fourth Sunday of Advent that love is shared abroad in our hearts. It is a love that God has. That love was what made him send his son at Christmas. And so as we reflect on love, I'd like to mention a few things. I don't want to preach a long sermon, you know, if I'm in church, I kind of can lock the door. So let's stay in there and we, we keep preaching. But we're online and we're going to enjoy our time today. But let, let me remind you, love is not an emotion. And I know that we live in a world today where it's all about emotions, how you feel. But when we talk about love in the real sense of it, it's beyond emotion. Actually, without trying to drag you into a lot of Bible studies today, 
there are various words used for love in the in the Bible. Uh, one of it is uh, stoge. One of it is uh, filio. One of it is uh, eros. One of it is epitumia, which is about this desire. And one of it is agapeo, which where where we get the love agape, uh, the love of God. Uh, and and so when we're talking about agapeo, is is not a love of emotion. It's a love of action. And one of the ways to demonstrate that is to think about the most popular scripture, if you remember at Sunday school, in John 3, 16. If you can remember, let's try to read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's try and do it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I, I'm watching uh, my friends that are backstage and they are reading it. They're trying to see whether how perfect they are getting the words correctly. And that happens every time. But I'm not going to bring you on camera so that we're not going to like, okay, this person says if eternal life. The other one says everlasting life, you know. But it's one of the most popular scripture for Christians. For God so loved the world. And it, it describes to us what love should look like. First, I'd like to remind you that love is active. Love is active. Love is not passive. We cannot claim to love without being active. And that's one of the things I really like about the Shadron United Methodist Church. And which I have loved about the United Methodist Church in general, but Sharon United Methodist Church in particular. There have been times that even the budget of the church, you know, we're falling short in our budget. Yet there are people in need in our community that the Art Council and many people will say, well, we need to give towards this. And we see people come to give. We forget about our own, you know, our own welfare, as it were, to reaching out to someone else who is in need. And we're asking ourselves, yes, we can make do with what we have, we can borrow, but someone is in need, some group of people, they need help. And we see our church as individuals, but also as collective, going to reach out to people. I was mentioning it, and I'm not going to mention them, but there was someone, a sister, not too long ago, who sent me a text and said, you know, I'm with this group of women, and we try to, you know, get money together every month when we meet, and we look for different ventures that we want to send this venue this money to oh pastor do you do you know anyone of course as a pastor i do have many people and then i started thinking about all these various people and i said you know there's this lady somewhere in nigeria who had had uh, issues with surgery and needed money for medication and uh, that would be something and i suggested a few more and she said yes i would like to support that person now someone that she doesn't know she has no idea who that person was she said i would like to support and so we got the money and we sent to that person. And the person was so excited, sent a, a text message saying, I'm so grateful. And that person, I said, I, I said, you don't know this person, but this person loves God. And because of that desire, that love for God is what motivates us to act. And so I want to thank our church, the Shadow United Methodist Church. We've continued to be involved in different things. And so that is important to note that love is active. You cannot say you love someone if you're not doing something towards those people. And love is not just about emotions. Like I said, there are times emotions may fail you. You may not feel so excited, but when you have told yourself, you see, love, agape love, this kind of love is a love of the will. You tell yourself, this is what I will do. So it's not about how I feel. There are times you want to help people and they, they mess up things for you and you may even be angry. But because you've made up your mind, I am going to be there for this person. I'm going to provide for this person. You go all out to help that person. So love is active. But also let's, let's remember, as part of love being active, love does things. Love engages in things. Uh, for those of you who are married or we have, you've always you've had a loving relationship or romantic relationship, I don't know where, you know, people say, oh, I really love you. I feel these emotions for you. Fine. But if it ends in the emotion, that is not going to sustain a loving relationship. It has to go beyond emotions to doing things. 
And so we read, for God so loved the world. So God's love for the world is so immersed, immeasurable, so big, so large. But it didn't end in the fact that God didn't say, I love you so much. I feel so much love for you. Oh, that's great. No. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. Love, real love, genuine love is active in that it gives and it continues to give. So God so loved the world. Not that they prayed, not that he wished, not that, you know, there are many things people say they do. They wish this happened. They wish that happened. They are so excited about this. They feel this way. They feel that way. But if your love does not go with doing things, if your love does not go beyond just talking into action, giving, then that love is not complete. For God so loved the world that he gave. So love, genuine love is given, always wants to give, is not tired to give, is not intimidated by what people say. God will have said, well, I don't know whether these people will appreciate what I'm giving to them, but whether you appreciate it or not, God continues to give. He gave his son. And we are encouraged, not just as a church, to keep giving. But also as individuals, I I don't know, we always talk about it in church with some of our friends here when we talk about sometimes people take advantage of you because they feel that you know how to give. But we conclude that in spite of that, we will not stop giving. We will not allow people's attitude and people's taking advantage of us to stop us from being the giving people that God wants us to give. He gave us that example. He loved the world that he gave. So maybe I should ask you, You say you love someone. How much have you given to them this year? Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a roommate. Maybe it's a cousin. Maybe it's a nephew. Maybe it's your church as a church member. Oh, I love my church. Okay, we can go check. Let's go ask the people counting the money and find out how much you've given to your church this year. Oh, well, I'm so busy. Oh, well, I don't really have enough. Well, maybe you don't love as much. So love gives, that's what we're talking about. And this season is a time to give. Look for ways. And there are people who just continue to challenge me. I walked into the office today, this morning, after more than a week, about a week ago was the last time I stepped in here. I saw on my chair a big, I've not even opened it, a big parcel, I don't know what it's inside, with a card saying Merry Christmas. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Getting into the office for the first time. But there's an excitement that comes when you receive things, whether they are small or big. So think about what you can do for someone, a family member, someone that you've not reached out to for a while, and look for a way of showing that love by giving. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He he, he didn't have like 100 and he gave one. You know, it's easier. Some of us, including myself, we're still struggling with tithing. We're still struggling with giving 10% of our income to God. We're still querying and arguing and wondering. But in the case of God, his only begotten son, he gave. So which means if something is only one that you have, you can still give. If it's two, you can give one. You don't have to wait until you have a million before you can give one. God demonstrated his love. He gave his only begotten son. And then he said, whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Let me quickly summarize my thoughts on this passage. First is that God demonstrated his love and we have to. We cannot claim to have love without demonstrating it. And a season like this, In this time of Advent, as we get into the Christmas season, is a time to demonstrate our love for our church, for our God, for our friends, for our enemies. Demonstrate your love. Secondly, God's love is universal. For God so loved the world. It's universal. God's love is not restrictive. You see, we live in a world today where people want to love only people who agree with them. Okay, let's get into politics now. Maybe some people want to love only Democrats because they are Democrats. 
Some people want to love Republicans just because they are Republicans. Some people want to love conservatives because they are conservatives. So if you're liberal, oh, they don't love you. But God's love is universal. It extends beyond our particularities. It goes global. It touches everyone. I don't have to agree with people before I show them love. I need to respect their humanity. I don't have to explain why they got into trouble before I could support them if they are in need. Can you imagine how cold it is? And for someone to be homeless at a time like this? And for people to say, oh, yeah, it's because they don't spend their money well. That's why, you know, if someone is saying that, that's going to be really problematic. But you see, it is important to know that we can help people without knowing why they got into trouble. God's love is universal. Everyone is welcome. I like one of the things we say in the United Methodist Church that everyone is welcome. And naturally, I may not want everyone to really come. There are people I don't like their attitude. Well, you don't have a choice. If you're following God's pattern, you have to be willing to welcome everyone to his house. Now, they may not agree with me theologically. They may not agree with me, you know, scientifically. The fact remains that God's love is universal. So a time like this, let's express that love to people. And then God's love, he says that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him, he gives everyone that opportunity, will not perish. Let me just say a little bit more about that. Now I have about two or three more minutes to go. God's love delivers. Will not perish. God is not interested. He's not delighted in the death of sinners, in the destruction of sinners. God's love delivers. He says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In Matthew 1, 21, for she shall bring forth her son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. God wants to save. His love wants to deliver us. What a great God we serve. Can I get an amen this morning? Can you just type in amen, amen, if you're still watching me? Can you type amen? God's love saves. God's love delivers. Amen. What a great God that we serve. Amen. I want to see the amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Linda. Amen. God's love delivers. Amen, Shalin. God's love delivers. I'm going to be putting on God's love delivers. He wants to deliver us. Amen, Vicky. Yes, God's love delivers. He delivers us from the captivity. Yes, Rob and Jane. Welcome. Amen. I can see that. I know it's amen. I know it's A-H and E-M, but I know it's amen. You're trying to type. Go ahead. God's love, Jimmy Stokey, amen. God's love delivers. Is that not exciting to know that we may live in a world where things are terrible, but we've got a God that loves us and he wants to deliver us. Yes, amen, Teresa. I can see amen from Mel. I can see amen from Margaret. Amen, God's love delivers. Are you not excited to be associated with, associated with that kind of a God? Melody says, amen, God's love delivers. You see, it is very important to remind ourselves. And Susan Hockey says, amen, God's love delivers. We may be stuck. Some of us know what it looks like in the past few days to be stuck at home, right? And can you imagine someone just walk, not the one that you paid, someone just walk with somewhere, they've got a big equipment and clear your, your you know, driveway, clear everything for you. And now they clear the road, which is not cleared yet, but let's assume that that happened. And now you can drive around town. How relieving that could be. You'll be so excited that, yes, I'm free to move around. And I think that's what God's love does. It delivers us from our guilt, our shame. It delivers us. God's love delivers us. But finally, shall not perish but I have eternal life or everlasting life. God, God's love provides abundance. You see, God doesn't just give you the little thing for now. He provides for your future. He provides for your eternity. And some of you who are older, you know, you have your retirement, you're planning for your old age, and you're providing for your family, provide for your nephews and all those kind of things. Wonderful. It's important to do that. 
you know, it's selfish to always think about yourself alone, but think about relationships that you have. God's love doesn't just come for the moment to deliver you, to save you, but it's in abundance because it prepares for your future, eternal life, everlasting life, a life without end. And I tell people that eternal life begins when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. When we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we become part of that. We begin to enjoy that everlasting life. It begins with us and goes into the future. You know, the psalmist says, yes, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I'll fear no evil for you are with me. Then it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord, the presence of God forever. Everlasting life. A life that is of God. Zoe, life that comes from God. And so on this fourth Sunday at Advent, we are reminded the coming of Christ is to save us from our sins and to give us eternal life, everlasting life. And we can share this joy with people. We can share this hope with people. We can share the peace in our hearts with people, lighting all these candles, reminding us of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but we have everlasting life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks that you have not left us ignorant, you have not left us helpless. You have come, you sent your only son that we may have everlasting life. You love us so much. You love us so much. So we're grateful for this love. Help us, oh God, to extend, accept your love and then extend this love to others that we meet in this season and for the rest of our lives. We give you praise and thanks because we have asked in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I'll turn it over to Stephanie as she makes announcements. We're in a church service, so online, but we are in a church service. So... I'll call in uh, Stephanie. Tell us. I am happy to remind everyone that there is a way to give to our church, even if we can't make it to the church. And it is through our website. And momentarily, I'm going to send that link in the chat so everyone can see that. And those who want to take advantage of it can click on that and follow the directions. It's pretty simple to do. I have done it before in the past and I'm happy to help anyone who might need some assistance in doing that. So, Tunde, would you like me to continue with the prayer? I am going to continue with the prayer. Holy God of hope and promise, when the children were in deep despair, you promised them a sign, the indication of a savior coming into their midst. As we bring you our tithes and offerings this day, so many of us are discouraged, trying to find our way. We need your sign. We need your son, not as simply a reminder of history, but as a new direction, a revolution of love that starts in our hearts a resurrection of compassion that looks beyond self and the accumulation of more and more things that don't satisfy. We need what only a savior can give. Guide us by your signs on this day as we begin the journey to Bethlehem once again. In the savior's name we pray, amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, so for those, uh, Stephanie has told us how to do that. Uh, we we'll go online to Chardon United Methodist Church, our website, and then we are able to uh, give. Some people can also give their checks. Uh, some people are already used to giving checks or so sending your check uh, to the church. I had the opportunity of meeting one, one of our parishioners in Denver. Uh, while I was in Denver, I was able to visit uh, David and uh, what's the wife's name now, Blake. Uh, and it was a great time having lunch with them 
and the wife says, you know, I really want to come back to Shadron. <laughs> like she likes Shadron. Oh, Sa thank you so much, Linda. Sandra, that's the name, David and Sandra. Uh, so please, uh, I had a great time with them. They've always continued to be uh, givers in, in, in our church, even though they are far away. And so I want to encourage us as we close this year to look for ways of supporting the ministry of our church, especially if you're a member of uh, Shadron United Methodist Church. When you're a member of a church, you move in and support uh, what uh, we're doing at the church, you know. So that's very important. Thank you so much uh, for giving. I thought I was going to be able to get a song, but I'm not sure I could get a song. But uh, so we're probably going to be, let's see if I can do that. And uh, just a while, let's see. Oh, that's, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that. <laughs> it's going to be more complicated to do that for now. Uh, I want to read some of the comments. Yes, uh, someone said wonderful message and and uh, love for all. Yes, we've got a few more minutes to, to end our service today. I just like that the, the, the hymn we'll have sung today is uh, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. It's talking about love. We will do our benediction. I'm just waiting for a few moments. Uh, as people go on our website, I took it off uh, and then they can do slash giving. And uh, we want to give people that opportunity. We don't have uh, uh, space is not hindrance to anything we want to do today. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Also, do not forget that this week on Saturday, we will be having a Christmas Eve. Uh, yes. Oh, Sharon. Now I can see Sharon Rickenberg. So glad that you're home safe and sound. Yes, it's a long one. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sharon. And for those who couldn't get us live, I would like you to share these after service so that they can be they can be blessed by the, uh, the worship and all the support that we've got for many of our friends today. I'm so glad that you are able to, especially thank you, Teresa, for getting this organized. Thank you, Linda, for stepping in to do all the readings for us. And thank you, Stephanie, for moderating service and lighting the candle. I really appreciate you all. Uh, I'll bring you back uh, to, to, you know, just to see your faces. So make sure. Yes, thank you so much. It's a good one. Let's receive this benediction. God still sends signs. Open your eyes to the possibility of grace. God still sends signs. Embrace the child of hope. God still sends signs. Let a song of joy send you forth in peace. Go with God. Who still stands? Who still sends signs? Amen. Amen. So thank you so much. Uh, glad that we're able to have a great time, a great time of fellowship, a great time of worship. The weather did not stop us. And thank you all of you that have continued to send. I've, there are so many of you online with us. There are some of you that are online, but I cannot see you because whether I'm not your friend on Facebook, something like that. And I've learned that, that there are many more people watching than I thought. So thank you from wherever you're watching. And even if you're not my friend, there's a way if you send a comment, then I can know. Uh, so thank you so much. And a few people came in this morning not knowing that uh, we've canceled service. And may God's blessings be with them. Some of them actually left an offering in the basket. I kept an offering box out there like, okay. So thank you, uh, Teresa. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, Linda. And do have a great week. And get ready for what God has for us this week. Amen. Mm -hmm. You also. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to put something to close us out.